Hi, my name is Bob Grinier and I'm a volunteer with Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. Before I went to Japan to test the Omaza vibrator system, I hoped that I would get an opportunity uh, when I had found out that he produced the Omaza gas uh, to test uh, various metals subject to the gas flame. And what I had noticed is that uh, pretty much every video out there on related gases or gases that are claimed to be similar were always testing very high temperature um, sort of ceramics or uh, metals like uh, tungsten or titanium. And so I wanted to kind of do something for a number of reasons uh, that was at the very other end of the spectrum. Now, I chose indium uh, for uh, at least three or four reasons. Uh, one of the reasons uh, is that it has a very low melting point. The indium that I wanted for this test, I wanted to be comically susceptible to a high temperature flame. And I sourced this material, it was very cheap, only 1445, 99.99%, 75 microns. So, uh, if you have a I'll click into this uh, we can see maybe uh, so it's basically a very thin piece of metal uh, that is used um, uh, for uh, a, a CPU uh, laser heatsink okay and so it's extremely uh, thin but actually the thermal and electrical conductivity is quite high in fact it's over half that of uh, tungsten which we saw where the Amaza gas was uh, applied to the center of a tungsten rod and wear away the uh, tape. Um, now this tape is, is uh, a standard 3M sort of uh, gaffer tape and uh, the plastic on here and the glue melts at a very low temperature, sort of uh, around about sort of 100 and something uh, degrees, 120 degrees or whatever. You can go and check this and you saw that it was failing. And actually, in the, in the case of the indium, what I had I'd done, with where we had the piece of metal, um, I had put um, the tape around that metal wire very deliberately to provide insulation. Then I put the foil folded over and then more tape to just hold it in place. And, and I wanted these things to be um, really easy to fail. Um, but the, one of the most important thing was if, if it, Evo's are able to conduct into metals. I didn't want the, them to be leaking into the metal structure uh, of the support framework. So that's why I wanted the, the tape in place as an insulator. So um, that may not have been obvious when I was talking about this before. But anyway, what is 75 microns? Well, here we have some SEM images of hair uh, from various students and uh, the standardized result is 60 to 80 micrometers. So essentially what we're talking about is <laughs> a piece of uh, metal foil that's as thin as a human hair. And now Asian hair is much thicker and Caucasian hair and, uh, is thinner and there are uh, thinner and thicker uh, hairs on our body. But in this study, uh, for instance, um, the hair, uh, it was it was in the range of the thickness of this 75 uh, micrometer indium foil. Now, when I'm talking about the temperature, uh, indium here, you can see, so this is on a P table, melting point, and in Kelvin, you can see indium is 429.75. Now, I wanted really the lowest temperature metal in, in this aspect of why I chose indium, lowest temperature metal, that wasn't basically a liquid at room temperature or practically a liquid like gallium at room temperature. Certainly at body temperature, it's, it's a liquid. And I didn't want it to be explosive or liquid at room temperature like the alkaline metal. So really, it's the only option uh, for this test. And I don't know why no one's ever done it before. Well, I'll share with you in the coming days uh, the actual video, which I think you'll find quite striking. Um, the sample that we had, this is actually the filter that was attached to the vacuum cleaner, uh, sucking any vapors that came out. And it, is, it looks a lot yellower on here than it does to the eye, very much more yellow. Uh, I don't know if I can uh, get the color uh, thing around. Right I've got a very yellow uh, light in this uh, uh, office here, so it's not a very good example. But um, put it in a plastic container, because again, if there was Evos in there, I didn't want them to leak out. And under the microscope, 
This actually was the only metal that we tested that actually turned into something that was able to drop under the weight of its own gravity. But as you will see in the video, it did uh, a lot more before it got to that point. Uh, anyway, so here you can see the sample is, uh, and uh, it's grey, it's not quite so lustrous under this uh, camera light, and uh, I'm just zooming in there for you. now. I have shared a couple of images uh, of this and the uh, one part is this kind of fibrous end over here and the other part is the other end down here uh, which under the microscope looks like it has loads of spherical gems in it and this is the actual piece of uh, metal that it fell onto and the interesting thing is and I'll share some other images that on the other side of this if I can turn it over This is the other side of uh, the bucket that uh, uh, it fell onto, and it had like a, almost like a burn mark on the outside, and there almost appears to be um, indium or something that that came through from the outside. I don't know. Anyway, um, I've got a couple of images that I want to share. Um, these are very early days uh, images uh, uh, from the other side with some interesting things. Uh, observed on that side and I really cannot wait to get this under the SEM. So as I said before this is the only sample that went into a state where it could uh, fall under its own gravity but it spent quite a bit of time before it got there which is surprising for something that melts at 156.6 degrees C. Now we determined that the uh, at the top temperature that the bolometer could see with a, an emissivity set to 0.95 of the uh, flame was uh, 130.2 degrees C. There's a lot of debate about that, but I think when we see uh, what the indium foil did at 75 microns, I think there's going to be a lot more debate. Anyway, so that is what the images I have been sharing are of. They are of this splat of whatever it is that fell down onto the metal. And again, I keep this on uh, plastic uh, to not contaminate it with anything above hydrogen and carbon, and also so that no EVOs that might be still in the structure uh, are tempted to leak out into the XY table of the microscope. Thank you for your time.